So I feel like I was kind of put on this earth for times like this, like specifically uh, for times like this when Jay Park does something that sets my entire timeline afire and we're all collectively looking at each other like, what is this? What is he going through? What am I putting myself through? Um, well, not Jay Park. He is not actually thinking about this. He never thinks of this. So um, the, the what are we going through never really happens to him until when the backlash reaches him and he you know has to has to like oh wait I'm, I'm once again being cancelled for cultural appropriation i need to be educated for the 50 11th time um so i've been writing about blackness anti-blackness cultural appropriation uh culture crossing conversations in korean pop and hip-hop for two years. I started um, partway through 2019 and I, I started with K-pop um, but really I started writing about K-pop but really what set a lot of this off for me was reading TK Park's really anti-black rejection of conversations about cultural appropriation and dismissing fans you know because we were all Korea boos and at that point I was not even like kind of intensely listening to the music or talking about it so I was like wow but that black fans aren't just Korea boos but that we are uh, colonizers and entitled and we're just mad that we gave Korean artists the tools to make hip-hop and this is and they, they're not doing it well enough like I have a whole article a two-part article uh, kind of rebutting his piece um, because it's bad and so, so I've seen a lot of Jay Park over the past two years. There was um, his whole thing with uh, D Avatar Darko, the rapper that's on one of his labels, the white guy with the dreads, and Jay Park pushing back like at that conversation. Like people were talking about, hey, once again, Jay Park, cultural appropriation, not great, you know, you hair, whatever, like, Jay Park is so kind of entrenched in cultural appropriation conversations that he or, or like he's so determined that he's the only person who can decide that this is okay kind of that he waded into conversations about a white man's dreads in 2019 like beyond his hair which like when he has like the gel in it like it sometimes looks like dreads and then if you look at the video for the dna remix his hair is one of several instances of cultural appropriation hair wise right so he got backlash especially because the song dna opens with um well, it's it's a video about pride pride in hip-hop pride in self pride in koreanness right so, you know, Jay Park comes and he, he's a rapper that, like, he's not like he's untalented, right? Like, it's him talking about his successes in the industry and how much he built. Like, Korean hip-hop owes a lot to him. Like, modern Korean hip-hop owes a lot to him. You know, and he's talking about, like, his morals, his, his power, right? Korean blood in my vein, never kneeled down, man, it's in my DNA. But he's doing that while looking like he's cosplaying black people and blackness right and then the line of um higher music people behind him is just a bunch of people with different hairstyles like there's one guy with like a perm that looks like an afro you have a lot of people with like fake dreads and it's like pride in self is super important especially because we know that um especially in hip-hop, Asian Americans are really just rejected. Asian women are objectified and Asian men are seen as inauthentic, right? Like, um, you can't have Asian women in hip-hop without them being video vixens or sex objects. Like, that's not expected, right? So Lee Young-ji being the only woman who gets to rap in the song is not great. <laughs> Because she's the only one, but it's also still important because you rarely see that, especially something that is then kind of marketed or pushed to a wider audience. But then it's like 
your engagement with the stereotypes about Asian men, right? Like, like it's all of these guys throwing up gang signs, talking about how hood they are. And it's inauthentic. And I know I did the whole thing, the whole article about uh, it's all fake, authenticity is fake. Um, and so it's not even something people should strive for, but <sighs> yes, authenticity isn't really real, but it also at the same time watching Jay Park constantly attempt it in Jay Park's um, roster and his different uh, companies, AOMG and Higher Music, it's just very frustrating, right? Like, the song isn't that bad. It's not the worst attempt at hip-hop trap out there. Um, everybody's living their best Migos life, and that's good. That's fine. But it looks like they're doing, like, a group cosplay photo. Like, and the, the lyrics don't really work. It's a lot of, like, like, somebody said, I have a Glock. Do you? Do you actually have a Glock? And if so, why? Right? Like, it is posing. It is performative and it doesn't work you guys aren't that hard I'm not that hard <laughs> and so, so seeing this was like really frustrating so this this went viral across um across Twitter with a lot of black um black fans of k-hip-hop and k-pop going like this is very tiring J Park you know, because we've been through this repeatedly, so he, just not just with cultural appropriation, but calling Jay Park out or just speaking to him, you know, like he just had to apologize for a song he used, he, a song he had where his verse referenced religion in a way that was dismissive and offensive, especially in his reference to Allah, right? Like, people we just had him apologize for that and it was not a good apology it was like i'm sorry that i that i hurt people but also thank you to the people who took their time to explain things to me nicely and it's like stop being passive aggressive you are literally too old for this right um and then before that there was the thing where i remember uh davida i believe posted for um this is just, I remember this because it was a year ago and it was like when everybody was like performing care for black people, um, you know, Davida posted talking about like cultural appropriation and stuff. And a lot of people responded to her like, okay, but Jay Park, you work for Jay Park, you work with Jay Park, what's going on there? Like you care about cultural appropriation, but that is something that is present in like your friend and employer's like body of work like he goes out of the house looking like that and her response was not great it was very defensive it was very um it, it belied her her initial kind of statement of care it was very like you people are making this bad like you people are attacking those who just want to help you and it was very well racialized it was very passively anti-black and, and then this is the thing like I remember like Jay Park I don't even think he's a bad person I just think that like he doesn't get that this isn't about haters like I am not saying this because I hate Jay Park right like I like Telefono the remix I like that video I like Mome I you know I like the things he does uh, music wise I like that he is redefining what it means to be a Korean rapper but his visibility means that he needs to be careful, he needs to be better, and he needs to actually engage with what people are saying. And he's not doing that because he'll be like, yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah, I get it. And then he just does the thing again, right? And this is a constant over years. Like, like I'll go back and I'll look and I'll be like, oh, yeah, this has been going on for like several years. Good, good to know. Um, and I think that the video itself would have been a thing, you know, we talk about, we move on. If not for the fact that Jay Park's response to this, right, his actual response was to sit there and write an essay. Like, I will um, po I'll post it up, like, here. Well, like, a just clip of me scrolling through that because it's ridiculous. Um... And he wrote like an essay, like it's, I'm gonna tell you how many words it is, you know, like, oh my god. 
it's not just it's not just that it's 1107 words long right he put a little heart emoji like a prayer heart emoji at the end like the issue is that it's not just video it's not just the song because the song does have have elements that i dislike as well like at one point in the song let me see that would be dark he was on i think either high school rapper or show me the money at one point the rapper dark in his verse is kind of confronting the idea of like like the idol rapper rapper um binary right and so his um his thing let me see if i can find it I posted it. Uh, the English lyrics, the translation is just because I was on TV show, y'all told me to quit being a rapper. Even though I do pop songs, it's more hip hop from the ghetto than yours. No. <laughs> no. And it's just the combination of this like performative, aggressive, fake ass and black masculinity layered on to these young men and the young G rejecting the industry stereotypes, right? Um, but let's go through his um, his thing. Let's go through this. So he, he starts it with like, the black and Latino people created hip hop. We understand that and think it's amazing and are grateful that you shared it with the world. I, he's not wrong, but he's also not right like blackness it's the blackness is the bigger thing here like it and it was afro latino people not just like your white cubans like or your white puerto ricans like lin manuel miranda did not create hip hop <laughs> sorry to hamilton fans he did not um and then it's kind of like, like, so he says, hip hop makes us feel liberated and empowered. It gives us an outlet to have our voice be heard and to express ourselves in a way society might not deem fit. Literally, yes. This is the thing that is a constant across all of the different rappers I've been researching, um, like in Korean, like the, so the K-pop rappers, but also the rappers underground or uh, less visible mainstream rappers. They all say like, hip hop lets us speak. Right? The problem is, is that in the process of speaking, they are using black sense. They are um, being aggressive, right? It's physical, it's threatening. It is the way that hip hop allows them to be themselves, to be their true selves, isn't actually by being them their true selves. It's by performing a kind of stereotype of masculinity, of kind of toxicity. It's why when you have an idol rapper go on like, show me the money, um, that, that they were rejected. It's why netizens, you know, hate on K-pop rappers, except for G-Dragon, <clears throat> because masculinity, and especially a performance of black masculinity, are why they're doing this. It's the aggression. Like, I think out of all of the rappers who do like the hard hood cosplay, like maybe Jessie is really like that offline i don't know she can like tell me if she wants but i think only jesse really is like that like jay park is not out here like brass balls toughness but he's not he's not and it's a performance they're they're not really performing themselves um we didn't get the best grades or go to college and we are not a doctor or lawyer so it gives us a sense of belonging and value gives us hope and motivation that we can switch up our situation if we put our put our hearts and minds to it and can make something from nothing okay you, the model minority myth is uh positions asians in and out of the united states and other countries other western countries as kind of like hierarchical you're assumed to be very intelligent like more intelligent than lesser people of color, especially like black people. Um, and so there are expectations laid on you and then your family has expectations for you that you do the smart thing, that you become the doctor or the lawyer, that you have a business, right? And so I understand that uh, of how Korean hip hop is appealing, right? Like I do, but I, I think that um, 
think this is a really shallow understanding of hip hop and what it allows you to be, right? Especially as an Asian American. Like, I would actually say that it's not a proper rejection of the stereotypes. It's just like, well, let's have a different stereotype. Um, I'm going to quote um, um, Myung Sung Song from Hanguk Hip Hop. She says in the book, um, for Korean rappers, creating a tie to blackness is crucial in identifying themselves as hip hop artists, right? And that actually ties into the next thing, right? A lot of our heroes are black rappers and not just the aesthetic. Oh, you just said you aesthetic. Um, not just the aesthetic, but their mindset on overcoming the odds and being goal oriented without caring what other people think and who might doubt you. So it's only natural that we want to be like them to a certain extent. Having a certain hairstyle or look gives us confidence and inspiration and makes us feel like rock stars. And it's because it's what we see and hear it feels natural to us. And because we, and it's also, bleh. also it's because we think so highly of hip hop and the figures in hip hop that we are influenced so much by them. And some of us grew up in a black neighborhood or a black group of friends abroad. So being inspired and influenced is a natural occurrence. Boy, the idea that you, no. when I was in high school, one of my friends um, from my senior year of high school was Vietnamese and he grew up in the same neighborhood that I did, right? Like we grew up in the hell of fucking hood, right? And I sound like this, I've sounded like this my entire life. That's not stopping. He does not sound like this. He did not sound like this. He had a black scent and it wasn't put on. This is just how he talked right? Like, that's just what his voice was like, because he did grow up in the hood. You know, he, he, that was his authentic self. That was his truth. That's not J Park's truth. That's not PH1's truth. You know, I accept it from like Tiger JK, because like, he's the same age as my sister. They grew up kind of in similar environments. Like, yeah, Jessie, eh, because I don't know if that's how she talks normally, like, I don't know. But the idea that, oh, I grew up around black people, so I want to be like them, I can be like them, doesn't hold water. Like, if I were to go and look at all of the artists, there are, I don't know how many artists in this video, but okay, so not, there are, there's a screenshot, like, like 20 guys and Lee Young Ji standing in a line for this video right? I'm supposed to believe that those 20 people all have black friends in Korea, that they all lived abroad, that, that on top of their, um, on top of their appreciation for hip hop, they naturally had black friends that, that just inspired them to want to be, look, sound, whatever, like us. No, that's, that's not true. Like, Again, I really highly recommend reading Hanguk Hip Hop in full. There's um, a conversation <clears throat> kind of about the presence and role of blackness in Korean hip hop. And um, I think Sleek talks about like just there aren't that many black people <laughs> in Korea. Like I have black friends who live in, visit, work in Korea. There are not that many. The ex, the black expat community in Korea, especially black Americans, is very small. So it just feels fake to me. Um, what else? Uh, hip hop is now a global genre. It is now received with much love worldwide and spread everywhere. So now each country has their own unique scene and sound, whether it be Korea, Japan, China, Malaysia, Thailand, Russia, Brazil, etc. I have thoughts on Japanese hip hop because that was where I actually started with all of this, um, the M Flow days. Uh, like I listened to um, so so much. Like I still have my CDs. I still have. If I had a Zune, still it would be on it. I grew up listening to Japanese hip hop, and they're also full of cultural appropriation and people tanning until they're um, my color. <laughs> like that's that's happening there too. Um, do we support and appreciate hip-hop and black culture? 
Yes, a majority of the hip hop artists here have spoke up and made donations about BLM issues and have had the conversations with our parents. We are the ones who listen to the music and go to the concerts when people cross over and we are the ones who make sure the rappers who come from the states, no matter how big or small, feel at home and show them what hospitality really is. We don't see color. I would like to argue that you do. Uh, <laughs> Oh my god. We feel like we're brothers and sisters in hip hop, which I feel is a universal language which goes beyond race, color, and religion. I have to find it, but there's a there's an article about how how hip hop is being divorced from blackness. So so it's like hip hop is global, like like Jay Park says, hip hop is global. Everybody has their own thing. And that globalization of hip hop is used to silence um, people and ignore critiques of anti blackness in different hip hop cultures around the world that have since basically excised or cut out blackness, black people, except like video vixens, uh, people tanning, people getting afro perms from these from these movements like that's not good like you do see color first of all um and kind of like the the weaponization of black lives matter by the way is really disgusting i hate it when when army did it when other fandoms use it um like i've written about um just not using black lives matter donations to for clout and like i'll link to that article um if i can find it i wrote it for um uh, in fandom publication um just how do you say that like a majority of the hip-hop artists here have spoken up and made donations about blm issues and had the conversations with our parents like that, that that's supposed to make me ignore the little dude with the afro or the dudes with the cornrows or their dreads like i'm supposed to think oh they appreciate my culture enough cultures enough to wear me they donated okay i'm good i'm gonna let it go I don't think so and I don't think that, that that expectation is fair that because they donated we can't speak and it's really weird seeing the fandom argument being used by a person who is a celebrity like this is the you can't comment on cultural appropriation that artist donated f to BLM but from the artist <laughs> like Jay Park thank you very much for you know, educating your your crew enough that they wanted to collectively donate to Black Lives Matter um, and that you may be having tough conversations with your parents and your friends, but ultimately you're not stopping. You haven't made the connection between the dehumanization of Black people, how our cultures are handed over and used as a universal signifier of aggression, toughness, sexual accessibility, whatever you haven't made that connection with how we're dehumanized uh, and killed and fired and hurt and it's a connection you can and should make like it's not just hair we're not having this conversation because we think you look better than us right we're not jealous of your hair we're upset because you don't get that we are hurt literally hurt for having our hair naturally come out of our hair the way it does like if i wore my afro out i could like to a job interview i wouldn't get the job unless it was like that's a risk you know there are people who've had their hair cut without their consent like i have a video about that i made a video about that a couple years ago two years ago that talks about that it's not just hair it's not just um it's not just that the idea that we are brother and sisters in in hip-hop it's actually pretty cool and I don't think that part is fake, but I do think that, well, brothers and sisters fight, so we disagree. So let us. That's a thing. Um, do we want to be black? No, I agree. I don't think you want to be black. None of y'all. Um, although we friends of color and are influenced by black culture and love and support it heavily, we are proud to be Korean and wouldn't trade it for the world. Can we relate to the black struggle? No, but there are certain elements that we can relate to and identify with. Every country, every culture, every person has some type of pain or struggle in their life. There's no other genre that portrays that so honestly other than hip hop. Uh, so, yes, true, okay. Um, but also just the usage of that, like as an excuse, like we all struggle, so we all do hip hop kind of. 
Like, I struggle. I'm not a rapper. Leave me alone. Um, I, just, I just love that. Like, there is no other genre that portrays that so honestly other than hip-hop. Metal. Metal exists. Emo music. That's a thing. Uh, do I think it's okay for Korean rappers to have dreads? I might not necessarily agree with it, but who am I to say don't do that? You are the front runner. You are like the leader. You have two companies, AOMG and Hire, your babies. You can literally set a new standard for Korean hip hop. One where appropriation of blackness isn't a default where you give people advice on how they can be better look better because they don't look good right like you can change things you are you're not powerless like yes i don't expect you to go down to wherever people are busking like hongdae or whatever and be like no 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 dreads for you but your crew your team should be held to a higher standard because you do know that this stuff hurts your fans it upsets them you get people called out right so you you aren't powerless in the situation so the idea like who am i to say don't do that well you are literally like an icon in the korean hip-hop industry that's who you are you can say that if you wanted just because i don't agree with something they're doing doesn't mean i can't appreciate them as people and artists we are not the majority picking on the minority and we are not trying to steal culture. If anything, we are allies and probably have the most understanding over here and can set things straight with people who make assumptions about hip hop or black culture based on shallow headlines. Am I supposed to give you an ally, Kiki J Park? Because that's not true. There are Korean rappers who don't do any of this. Like there are multiple Korean rappers who don't do this or who aren't kind of positioning their interest in hip-hop as something that makes them better than other Koreans. There are Koreans who aren't into hip-hop who uh, talk about this stuff. There are Koreans who don't listen to rap, who can have a complex, necessary conversation about anti-blackness in Korea. Like, you're not special because you know, like, what the hip-hop origins are like you're not special that doesn't make you a better person and that's weird to frame it like that like absolutely weird to frame it as that you need to stop jay park i know you're not gonna watch this but you need to stop um wow you guys made the blueprint which we are greatly appreciative of because hip-hop gave me everything i have today okay with the internet and hip-hop being such a global mainstream genre, each country has their own hip-hop scene unique to their own culture now, based on you guys' blueprint. <sighs> yes, but no. Hmm. If you break it down, we probably have more things in common than not. And just because you know Korea from K-pop and K-dramas does not mean everything is all just dandy and soft here. I have a history degree. I did not use it for this, but I have a history degree. And and this is nonsense. Like the the fact is that he, that the, the the like you you know K Korea from K-pop and K-dramas. When TK Park did his his so he did the brief history of Korean hip hop with Young Gay Kim, but then he also did his rebuttal to Black Americans going, "Okay, but what about the impact of black people on Korean hip hop. It was like basically really dismissive and snotty. Like you must all, again all be Korea boots, right? It's very infantilizing. Like he quotes Edward Said in his thing and everything, and it just shows that J Park, T K Park, a lot of the people like the talking heads. Like I have beef with a bunch of the Korean American writers who talk about Korean uh, hip hop and international fandoms because they all frame us as jealous children too unintelligent too sensitive to know what the real korea is like and it's like no one is saying koreans do not have problems no one is saying korea is a utopia actually no one is saying that what we're saying is your pain and the similarities that we do share as communities like culturally we do have a lot in common with koreans like a lot of people have noticed that you know that does not excuse pretending to be us it does not excuse cultural appropriation it does not excuse excuse um 
the way that these rappers talk to and about us, right? It's very condescending. Like no one is saying, oh, Koreans, you have no problem. And this is like, this is very analogous, like paralleling the, the like, uh, how do I have white privilege? I'm poor conversations that we get over here from, from white people. Like, stop that. You don't want to be like that. Um, I won't get into detail, but the Korean people have had to deal with a lot of inhuman things in our history and have had to hustle our asses off to get this much recognition because not too long ago, most people didn't even know where Korea was. And when I was younger, they didn't even know what Korea was. And that's true. That's true, but it's like you're responding to pain by causing more frustration and pain. The this is a really bad argument and I really wish that this hadn't happened, right? Like, like this is, this reads like a Stan Twitter shit. Like it reads like somebody who, um, it reads like somebody who's new to Stan Twitter defending their artist fave. And it's very frustrating. Um, and when I was younger, they did, oh, sorry. No matter what, I know that there will be people fighting in the comments because that's just internet culture nowadays. But I just look at it as we all live in this world and influence each other. And as long as the intent was pure, we shouldn't bash each other, even if we don't see eye to eye to everything. Okay. This statement is then belied by what he says next, right? Like, if the Migos want to wear Chinese attire in a song called Stir Fry, that's racist, by the way. Stir fry, kung fu themed, and that's what made them feel good at the time. All good. No, it's not good. If Nikki wanted to look oriental on a song called Chun Li, and that's what made her feel sexy, why not? Still racist. Okay, carry on. If Lil Uzi Vert wanted to be an anime character in PNGS, man, more power to him. That's completely different, but okay. Um, <sighs> there's always going to be people who nitpick, but y'all got to realize there's more evil people than young Korean rappers with dreads trying to make something of themselves through hip hop. We're not calling y'all evil. We're not saying you are a bad person for liking hip hop. We're saying that we're uncomfortable with you wearing us. We're uncomfortable with the performance of blackness. And you're not actually good allies, you know, because if you were good allies, you would listen to us when we spoke you would attempt to make an effort. Instead, you wrote over a thousand words to excuse your hair and the hair of people in your video. And that doesn't even begin to acknowledge the conversation that people were having about the lyrics, right? You did that. You did that instead of listening to people. And you always do that. Jay Park, you always do that when you get called out. This is so fucked up. Um, we are not the ones trying to downplay black culture and the black agenda. What is the black agenda, Jay Park? Tell me, what is the black agenda? What is it? You know, um, we are out here to spread love and uplift the people around us with what black culture has created, hip hop. And we are thankful. If y'all can fangirl over young Korean dudes with dyed hair, I don't see why we can't fanboy over rappers with face tats and dreads. He said that. And this is like very similar to what he said in defense of uh, Avatar Darko. Let me find it because I screenshot this. Um, yo, feeling somebody's music is personal opinion, but hating on somebody because their hairstyle, I'm sorry, but that ain't it. Jay Park and Avatar Darko never disrespect the culture and always give back. That's like saying a non-Asian person shouldn't use Korean words and shouldn't listen to K-pop because they didn't go through all the suffering Korean went through. If you don't know, look that shit up. And again, weaponizing your past struggles, cultural struggles against black people is really fucked up and super anti-black. Um, it's 2019, every culture, every ethnicity influences each other. And as long as we're not disrespecting each other, it's all love and nothing else. If I sound like a dumbass because of this comment, then I guess I'm a dumbass. This was 2019 and that is the same attitude that is present in this freaking long comment, right? 
um, everybody's, actually, no, I'm not even going to, to the next part yet, just fixating on that, like, if you listen to K-pop, um, if you can stand Korean idols who have dyed their hair or whatever, you can let us live, basically. And it's like, you couldn't even do the discourse right. You couldn't even say, you couldn't even do a button on June. You couldn't even go, oh, if you can like idols who do this hair, you should let us do what we want. You couldn't even do the discourse right, man. Dyed hair is not comparable to locks or homeboy with the afro or all of the hair crimes committed in that video, including yours. Everybody's into what they're into. Let's just love one another and be kind, whether on the internet or in person. <sighs> Weaponized niceness. Usually you'd only see that from white women, but thanks, Jay Park, for showing me that dudes can do it too. Good going. Uh, also, shout out to our PR, Julie, who told us not to post this video. She's the best. But I didn't want to hide the Korean hip hop culture. This is what hip-hop kids look like in Korea, and I wanted to showcase it and address it to the best of my ability to let the world know where we're coming from. I've been all over the world and hung out with everyone from criminals to billionaires and realized everyone has different perspectives and we can learn to disagree. No. The world would be so boring if we didn't share each other's foods, cultures, and experience. Don't have to support, but hope y'all can at least let us live our lives and give us room to grow and progress, progress before making assumptions and bashing. Peace and love, prayer, heart emoji. Jay Park is in his 30s. He's like two years older than me, two or three years older than me. He's in his 30s. And at what point will he grow? At what point will he progress? I know people who've been into Jay Park for his entire career and they do not see that he has even attempted to change his attitude, his um, approach to these conversations. He literally does this shit where he, he posts something like this after getting called out and it's basically like an attempt to brush it under the, under the rug. And that's not right. Rather than, you know, like, so you get called out for this video, right? Why not? speak with a cultural consultant. Why not hire someone to talk about this with the artist? To, like, if you're not gonna listen to a black person, because at no point has Jay Park ever listened to a black person who said, hey, this stuff is iffy, let's talk about it. Um, at no point has he done that. So he's not gonna listen to a black person, but Yerong, the comic artist, has her comic series on cultural appropriation on black hair, listen to her. I'm sure if not her, you, there's probably a white person who is an anti-racist expert in Korea who can talk about anti-blackness, cultural appropriation and stuff. Talk to them since you won't listen to black people. But overwhelmingly, the issue is that it's not just hair, it's not just hip hop, it is this attitude of entitlement to blackness that is shown even in addressing us. Like this is the most condescending ass shit I've ever heard, well, that I've heard since the TK Park shit. And it is offensive that this is what we're met with. It's like, so y'all can do this, but we can't. Especially that last part, like comparing like Migos, Nikki, um, Lil Uzi Vert to what they're doing. It's like, it's not okay when they do it either. There's a difference between, um, there's a difference between honest cultural exchange and what both sets of these people are doing. Nicki Minaj shouldn't have done Chun-Li. She shouldn't want to be called Chun-Li. That's, that's appropriation too. In the same vein, like, remember Brian? Remember? What his what his username what his uh his hip hop name was before Rich Brian or what the Brian used to be like these are all bad things like these aren't good like this isn't this isn't a competition and then the fact that Jay Park brings up you know the history of the Korean people and and that is a very deep, very painful well of subjugation, oppression, 
colonization, US intervention. It's not good shit. But he leverages it against Black Americans. And it's the same thing TK Park does. I think um, Juwon Kim has done it. Like a bunch of people do this when engaging with Black Americans over these conversations about cultural appropriation and performing or performative Blackness. And it's like, how can you do that without feeling the sting of your ancestors snacking you actually? Because that's that's what you're 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 whipping out um generational trauma so that you can wear dreads in a music video and that'll make you feel bad <sighs> i am not bashing jay park i'm not even disappointed in him disappointment would mean that i thought he was better than this uh that i thought that he could do better than this but jay park is in his 30s at what point will jay park go oh hmm let me not at what point will jay park stop subtweeting black people who criticize him at what point will jay park publicly and privately reckon with the fact that he has been aggressively driving away his black fans and you know who aren't you know pick me's um, who I'm engaging with him and his work, at what point will he pause to think I shouldn't leverage the painful history of Korea, uh, Korean experiences under imperialism um, and colonization to win internet fights? Like, what are you? Are you on Tumblr in 2012? Like, that's what you sound like when you when you do that kind of leveraging. Ultimately, you should have listened to Julie. You should have listened to Julie, and Julie was right. If you were going to do a video about your pride in hip hop and your pride in your sense of self in hip hop, it should have been something more nuanced, more tasteful, something that showed these rappers with their families and their neighborhoods, not like generic, like we, tr we out here trapping shit. Like, this is not your reality, this is not your life. Um, especially because we know that for many Koreans who make it in any capacity in hip-hop that it is middle class you know it's a middle class success story it's the access to English um, it's not you're not you're not in the ghetto you're not where I am literally right now you're not where I am you're not where I've been you're not in the hood you're in your hood but that is not the hood and and this performative shit is very frustrating because we go through this multiple times a year and we also go through it with the with the idols that we are assumed to stan like how about you make hip-hop that's authentic to yourself the end